Introducing the legacy of the Sisters of St. Casimir of Chicago, Illinois. Please join us on a virtual tour of this room. We will take you through this sacred space. The Communicators for Women Religious Chicago Regional Group visited this place about two years ago, and we were inspired to begin an initiative called Meet Our Sisters Tour that will be part of National Vocation Awareness Week in November. Who are we? We are Diana Chivas, Sister Margaret Zalat, Sister Margaret Petkavich, and Christine Bacco. Please join us on the virtual tour. Welcome to our SSC Legacy Space. I am Sister Margaret Zalat, a member of our SSC leadership team. Our Legacy Space is located on the first floor of our former mother house, now known as the St. Casimir Center home of Catholic Charities of the Chicago Archdiocese and our administrative offices. We were encouraged to create a space to tell the story of our foundress, Venerable Servant of God Maria Culpis, and our congregation, the Sisters of St. Casimir. We wanted this space to be more than a storyboard, more than a museum. We wanted it to be an experience that would inspire visitors, real or virtual, to connect their own dreams with what they saw. It is our prayer and our hope that the dream continues. God is calling each of us to follow our hearts and find a way to make a difference in our world, just as Mother Maria did. I'm Sister Margaret Petkavich. I'm the Vice Postulator for the beatification cause of Venerable Mother Maria Culpus, the foundress of the Sisters of St. Casimir. This panel says the dream. Truly, the founding of our congregation was rather a miraculous incident. It was the divine providence of God, God our Father's great love for his people, and a letter. I say a letter because the young Casmira, at 15, her parents received a letter from her priest brother, Father Anthony, pastor of St. Joseph's Parish in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He was lonely for his family, and he asked if the young Casmira could come as his housekeeper. This shook her to the core. She wasn't ready to leave her home. Yet, she knew that this was God's providence. This is what God asked of her. And often in her writing, she would say, I will not be selfish with God. So she arrived. In fact, she was smuggled out of Lithuania because Tsarist Russia controlled the country. She was buried with the family under, in a wagon, under a pile of potatoes so that she could cross the border where the Tsarist Russian troops were. Mother Maria began slowly with one school in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania at Holy Cross Parish. Thus began our Ministry of Education. While Mother Maria was at Mount Carmel, some priest friends were getting things ready to move the center to Chicago. They actually were starting from scratch. They picked out the land, they started building, they also went parish to parish to collect funds for this new building project and to find out whether the parishes were interest, interested in having the sisters come teach at their schools. When Mother Maria came to Chicago and saw the new mother house, she wondered, what will we do? Mother Gabriel, IHM, First Superior of the Sisters of St. Casimir, gave this advice, get started. She didn't care what time of the year it was, how many students they could recruit, and so Mother Maria recruited four boarders and 17 day students and opened what became St. Casimir Academy. This school eventually grew to become a four-year high school for young women. But Mother Maria didn't stop there. She saw there was a need 
in Pennsylvania to have a new center. And so she went looking for land. She found a parcel of land in Newtown, Pennsylvania and purchased it and it became Villa Joseph Marie. It was a center for sisters co to come back there during summer months and a place where a school began. Again, she started with a small boarding school that eventually grew into what is now Villa Joseph Marie. This oh. panel is entitled A Holy Woman. Mother Maria was gifted with two parents that were great examples providing for her leadership skills. The mother was the caretaker of the poor in the village and the dad had leadership skills assisting the pastor. He also knew the Psalms by heart and would pray them throughout the day. So she had embedded, she was embedded with these two gifts. Once the process for Mother Maria's beatification and canonization cause was established, there were many areas that had to be addressed. One of them was to preserve all of the artifacts that were in her position, possession. This case displays just a few of the things that we had found. We found the medal that she had worn, the rosary that she used, the crown that was on her head when she celebrated her silver jubilee as a religious, many of the relics that were found on, in her desk or on her desk, the rosary that she wore around her waist, her naturalization papers and her eyeglasses, and the cord that she herself had created and worn around her waist. It symbolized the dedication to, and the devotion that the community had to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and also the blue cord symbolized the connection with the Immaculate Heart of Mary sisters who had established us and given, our found, given us our foundation. They remained very close friends throughout our lifetime. Perhaps one of the most precious artifacts that we have of Mother Maria is her ring given to her when she professed her three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Our legacy space culminates in a very special room, the room, the bedroom and office of Venerable Mother Maria Copus. This room was brought down once the legacy space was created. It contains all of the artifacts that were there in her office and bedroom when Mother Maria was alive. She actually died in this space. This one here is a replica of where she worked and lived for 27 years as the general superior of the sisters. She died in this room on April 17, 1940, returning to God who was always the center of her life. That day was a remarkable day. Mother had been suffering for about eight years with cancer and she had told her sister nurse that she had asked God for the special gift of being able to suffer with him during the last three, day, three hours of her life. April 17th, from 12 o'clock to three o'clock, she suffered bitterly. She passed away at nine o'clock at night. The sisters tell us that throughout the day it rained and it poured and the winds beat the building mercilessly. At nine o'clock when mother's life expired, the wind ceased, the rain stopped, and a stillness pervaded the entire area. When the funeral director came, he approached, knelt down, prayed before her body, and kissed her hand. All of this is witness of the holiness and the sanctity of Mother Maria's life and how people had witnessed this and held her in such great esteem. It was Cardinal Cody 40 years later in giving a sermon to the sisters on New Year's Eve when he began to speak about her as a holy woman. And I still remember the moment when he said, why aren't you sisters working on her beatification cause? Of course, we couldn't wait for him to come out of chapel, and the general superior said, 
Bishop, what do we do? What do we do? And he said, call my office and I will assist you. And that was the beginning of the cause. So you see, there are many people to whom we owe a debt of gratitude for helping us bring Mother Maria to this spot of venerable Mother Maria. Three of our sisters who were artists at the time after she had passed away were ready with materials to make a death mask. They did. They created her face most beautifully and a bust was made, letting us know forever what did she look like, for many of us had never met her. As was mentioned, the bishops of Lithuania invited Mother Maria back to her homeland. There she established the Sisters of St. Casmer. This, in essence, was a gift to her homeland. The congregation grew, they staffed many schools, and worked with various people who were in need of God's love and their ministry. Because of her work in Lithuania, Mother Maria was presented with the medal called the Grand Duke Get the Minis Award in 1933 for the work that she had accomplished. This panel depicts the history of the Sisters of St. Casimir. Of course, too much has happened over the past 113 years to really go into depth, but perhaps we could talk about the different cardinals who, of Chicago who have supported the cause. First in 1986, Cardinal Bernadine assisted us with sending materials to Rome. Then we had Cardinal George, who was present for our 100th celebration in 2007. This depicts the sarcophagus that was created after Mother Maria's holy remains were exhumed. One of our sister artists created her in the midst of her ministries and her two foundations. Lastly, in 2010, Cardinal George was present in, in Rome and he presented the book known as a Positio. Today we continue our ministries with the same spirit that Mother Maria had. We continue using the words of Mother Maria, always more, always better, always with love for God and neighbor. And if you look at the panel behind me, you see some of the ways in which we are doing this. The top image is an Im image at an immigration rally in Washington, D.C. We had spent considerable amount of time in Chicago studying the plight of our immigrant brothers and sisters and decided we had to stand with them. And so, we joined with over 100,000 people at Washington Mall. And we were proud to stand with our brothers and sisters from Chicago. We want Mother Maria's dream to continue. And so we have a very active part of this legacy space. And it's the one that children love to run to. But we tell them the message of this bell that's here and we want to ring it. We want them to ring it. And this one time I had two young boys here and they were ringing the bell and they decided that each time they rang the bell, it reminded them of a promise they were making to God. And so what we wrote on this wall of our legacy space is we're reminded that the bell rallied the sisters to prayer service, activities, and meals. This was the actual bell they use. And so we said, so let its chime also be your call to action as the legacy continues through you. Go forth and do good in the world. My name is Christine Buckle and I work for Catholic Charities of Chicago. Um, here in 2014, the sisters dreamed and prayed for some organization to continue their mission. And that happened when Monsignor Boland came and uh, saw the potential for this property. Uh, the property was transferred in December 2014. 
So the mission of the sisters continues as Catholic Charities helps anyone in need. And here we have 24 programs under this roof, but totally Catholic Charities has 150 programs taking care of the needs of everyone. Uh, the staff represents all different cultures, and um, when a client comes in, they're greeted warmly by Sister Margaret McTaggart, saying, good morning, good afternoon, beloved of God. This has resulted in the clients asking for prayers of the sisters. The staff also interact with the sisters and benefit from their prayers. Um, there are other representatives from other communities working at Catholic Charities. For instance, we have S Polish sisters in the food pantry. We have a sister from Uganda, Africa, working in the office in housing. And there are other sisters who are in management and supervisors. Of the 150 programs we have, this has greatly expanded the sisters' wish to continue. And we help seniors, veterans, families. We have adoption, case management, counseling, housing, health fairs and mobile outreach to the homeless. So in Mother Maria's dream is being realized through Catholic Charities, always more, always with love, and the gospel is being lived. It was Bishop John Shanahan who created our seal. Christmas time, he came to the sisters' home, presented a beautifully gift box, and in it was stationery embossed with the seal he himself had created the lily, the sword, and the crown. All titles connected with St. Casmer and what he said would be the lifestyle of the sisters. Lily, their single-heartedness working for the Lord, the sword to do battle against self-centeredness, and the crown would be the gift for those who are faithful to Jesus. While this seal symbolizes the sisters of St. Casmer, it also symbolizes every Christian. This statue is very precious to the Sisters of St. Casimir, the Sacred Heart. When Mother Maria entered her first convent in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania, she knelt down and she felt that the Lord was saying, my love has gathered you here. And thus we see the story of the Sisters of St. Casimir and the legacy that they have left for God's people.